My name is Shei Jagede. This is the Tech Journey series. Here we share incredible stories of Africans doing things in the tech space and of course show you how you too can do incredible things. With me today is David Afolayan. He is the CEO and co-founder of TechNest. Welcome, David. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so glad to have you. Okay, let's just jump right into it. All right, let's go. As a child, what was the what was your answer to the legendary question? What do you want to become when you grow up? Mm, that was a lot. <laughs> And at some point I was quite confused. Okay. So when I was in primary school, I wanted to be a food seller because I like food. Okay. And yeah, later I wanted to be a pilot because I saw planes flying. Okay. Uh, at some point I wanted to be a policeman. At some point I wanted to be a footballer. But later, I think I fell in love with the media space. I like the way people broadcast news on TV. And they always dress like they were rich. I'm going to suit me like when a series go back with his white car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> journalist and, and that was it but at that point I was already getting older but as a child I had a lot of dreams and none of them had anything to do with what I'm doing. <laughs> That's so interesting. <laughs> That's not an imaginary child that you know you're just thinking about this and then I want to be this, I want to be that. Yeah. Just simple, like there was a day when I was young, a passenger came to our town just became president in 1999 and I saw the SSS people in suit with this but they were running around the car like, I want to be an SSS <laughs> It's just time to dream, just anything is possible I wanted to be everything, yeah So what did you do now, Anna? Um, so And how did you get here? Ah, uh, a lot of things So, you know, the turning point or the decision point for many of us is when we wanted to write jam Okay like, that's when you realize, okay, whatever you choose at this point is what you're going to be for life. So in my own case, they wanted me to be a lawyer because in the house, I argue a lot. And they thought I was going to be a pocket player, something like that. But okay. I just felt I was not going to do law. I wanted something that had to do with communication. So I was looking at specific schools. I, I, had, I made up my mind that I was going to be UI. Okay. But funny enough, that year UI was not in admission because oh. UI wanted to focus on postgraduate studies. So in 2007, they were going to do admission. Okay. So I was going to choose IFE. And the only course that was available in the communication line is English language. Mm -hmm. So I chose English language because IFE was not in mass school and a couple of other things. So I chose English language, linguistics. I, I feel up for it. And that was how I found myself in it. So, along the way, most of the courses in English, there are a couple parts where they talk about language, grammar, mm -hmm. phonology. But there is that part in English where they talk about the application, pragmatics, communication, and all that. I I chose more of those courses. Okay. I, I felt that was where my way was leading. In. So I did some little bit of drama, stage, lighting, acting. I did all of that in English language mm -hmm. because I felt that was where I was going to go to. And that's what got me here, and that's it. Oh, it's so interesting because the, the stories I hear, if you study language in school, mm -hmm. it means that you want to become a teacher or something. That's what <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what it is, actually, because if I think about it, over 80% of my classmates are teachers. Okay. Yeah, like I said, so most people, the problem is most people that find themselves studying that course want mm -hmm. to study law. Okay, okay. Yeah, so what happens in Nigeria university setting, I mean for those of us who know, is if you want to study medicine, and you then are not to cut off math, it does. Give you anatomy, mm -hmm. they give you both, both me, zoology, depending on how big your score is. So okay. most people who couldn't get law in university of the fair would always get in English. Then if your scores are lower, then you can go to history, um, philosophy, psychology, because traditionally people don't choose those courses. Right? Exactly. So, sort of the fallout from law ends up in those departments. So there are a few people who chose English mm -hmm. because they wanted to study English. So there are very many other people who found themselves there. So there is always that kind of, I didn't want to do this, and many people don't turn out very well. Uh, so most of them become teachers. Then there are other people who, who migrated from 
education schools. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. College yes. of Education. Yes, and they are in our department. So kind of like I said, they are, the, the curriculum is very vast. If you are intentional about it, you can, you can do anything. Interesting. Yeah, so because we have a couple of big names in Nigeria that, that studied English. Uh, Lai Mame, for instance, studied English in Italy. Lai Mame. English, you know, <laughs> a couple of other people. So if you look at those people, they are, they are intentional about becoming journalists in their early days. And they have been doing things related to that field right from while they were in school. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Okay, I'm curious to know because you mentioned that you studied English and there was a communication part that you were interested in. Yeah. So how did you get into tech? Ah, that's another long story. So we love stories. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing is, um, while I was in school, mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of things that were outside of school. Okay, right? like what? I joined organizations like SAIF. Um, What's SAIF? Is a student in entrepreneurship. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was in Megaphone, an editorial board. Okay. Yeah. So, because of those participation, I, I had to do things that were out that were outside of the curriculum of the school. I was a journalist. I I wrote columns in some newspaper while I was in school, and um, for some reasons, I wrote mostly about arts and politics. Okay. Okay. So I got out of school. I did my service, and I came to Lagos. I wanted to get a job, and I got a job as a communications person in an IT company. Mm -hmm. and that was the beginning. So I realized there is a whole new world that not very many people are speaking about at that time. Okay. That was before for me in the tech boom in Nigeria, and uh, so that was in that department. I had to because I had to write content for that company. Tech, I had to research tech, mm -hmm. and I, I kind of loved the space, and that was the introduction. And every other thing after that was about tech. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> so, I know I've had a conversation with you in the past, and you mentioned, and from these stories, I can see how intentional you are about your journey. So, you also mentioned how even during the school holidays, how you went in search of internship. Can you yeah. share the story, please? Yeah, so. Oftentimes, you see people tell you there are no opportunities around, but some opportunities are so big there. I mean, people out there cannot deny you. And one of that is when you volunteer. So, in my school, if you study English language, there is no, there's no room for um, internship. Internship, like the engineering yeah, like the engineering students. So, you are bound to be in that school for four years. Okay. But what happened is, I mean, anybody who has been to a public school in Nigeria, you always have to contend with that school. So I experienced about two or three ASU strikes during my time. Okay. And what I did is, once we go on ASU strike, within the first two weeks, I'll start looking for a place to practice. So I knew the first time it was in the newspaper. I just approached the gate and I told them I'm a student of the fair. I want to see the editor. People kind of respect me because I was a student and I said I wanted to work. Um, they were fine with it, but they were not willing to pay me, right? So whatever sacrifice it was going to take, I made up my mind I was going to do it. Okay. That was how I got to meet <coughs> real-time journalists. I wrote with them. I did other things with them. And because I subsequently, all the answer strikes, I filled up with internship opportunities. Wow. I was able to get experience across. You see? Yeah, so I did radio. I, I, I did it in Radio Lagos. I did it some other newspapers. And that was it. So by the time you were getting ready for your first job, you already yeah. had? First job says it was after three years ago. In Nigeria. <laughs> It's always like that. Fresh out of school. They want you to be 12 years old, but you want to be out of school. I don't know. I don't understand how they do that. So, three years experience. I just went to my CV and I started noting all those internships. Like, I said that this, I, this place, that was one year. I did internship for four months here, six months here, and I strike four months here. By the time I calculated it together, I thought they used to about three years. I'm, like, I'm good enough for three years. So, I applied anyway. That's why they found that I just finished general IC and for some interesting reasons, the HR people decided to consider it, and that was it. Awesome, awesome. So what do you do now? Um, so, like you said, I'm the co-founder of TechNex. TechNex is a media company. We write tech stories across Africa, um, and our goal is to write it in a language that people can understand. Because, I mean, coming into this space, there are other players, but we felt there is also that need to cascade the conversation 
down to the language and other people can understand and also tell the story of other people that are not yet big okay so instead of focusing on just the top 10 players we also look at other people doing fantastic things in this space and that was why Technex was born awesome awesome yeah. So if you've never heard of Technest, just try Technest or NG. Yeah, you know, it. check it out. <laughs> so um, I'd like to know at Technest, what are some of the tools or platforms you use in your day-to-day -day job? Yeah, so we we have very serious conversations with social media. So we have social media tools, quite a lot of them. There are platforms you can use to have great conversations, like good tools. Um, Good tools can help you navigate the popular social media platforms. You, you have other SEO tools you can use to check out keywords without talking about trending topics. Um, there are others we use to mark out special things like Calendly. So you know what is going to happen a week from now. There are specific days in the space that we celebrate and we check it out. And so those are tools we use for social media. Well, we create stories on social media space for everyday conversations that we write. And that's where you talk about tools for aggregating words like Grammarly, like WordPress, whatever, whatever. Um, the other things we do. Okay. Yes. Content production is gradually going away from just writing. Okay. Um, the biggest journalists in those days were the guys who can write 1,200 words and they will, they will write it in a very fluid way. But now people are diversifying to video, to audio content. So we also have team guys that do designs, that create videos, that do interviews. And those tools, uh, we have to use a lot of creative tools to, to be able to produce them. So uh, what, what really helped us is technology is a leveler, so okay. we don't really have to buy big structures or have a printing press before we could be a news platform, we could just use technology. So most of our tools are focused on creating the content that we're going to put on the technology that people can consume. Awesome. I see that social media plays a very big role in your day-to-day -day yeah, activity. That is why digital balance is very bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you that, how has that been for you? Yeah, so the, the biggest problem with Twitter ban is not, it's not just that we miss the conversations and the trends, mm -hmm. it's also that uh, we've, the biggest point that we need to fight is that just that the government can hush people's voices. Right, because True. Twitter used to be the space where people come to vent, you could, yeah. you could write anything. Yeah and it could become a trend, right? So I can remember people someone doing a trend about how, how he, he bought and killed a chicken that was making noise beside that house. Yes, I read that story, and, I read that story. And that, and that became like the trending thing. It's just someone saying, this is what I do, mm -hmm. sharing the story, and become a big thing. So Twitter is a place where people, nav people navigate, check out other people's ideas, but people also create a movement. Mm -hmm. even for the space so we check out people that are doing fascinating things so because of those conversations we join the space we read out what people are talking about then we go doing search so if people are hailing someone for creating something beautiful we approach that person and ask them and bring them to the limelight and we've written about a lot of people doing fantastic things in nigeria that have gotten opportunities from overseas mm -hmm. because people from other countries are checking our space yeah people that they could help or they could bring it into their space to do something we need to tell our stories yeah so twitter is that place where we tell our stories and it's really a big issue and i hope that the government resolves that in time so i hope so too back. because even with the VPN, it's not normal. No, it's, right. it's just like going through the back door. Black market is not like giving a market. No. <laughs> That's true. I hope so too. Yeah. So I would like to know what's like your typical day like? What's like your daily routine? Yeah, so I wake up very early and because we have a two hour meeting in the morning. Okay. We talk about what are the conversations people are having, what are the conversations we need people to have. Mm. Because the media is just an, it's also an agenda setting platform. True. So we tell people what they need to talk, talk about. about. Yeah, so when we have those meetings, we decide who among us is going to lead that conversation. Session. And we'll go ahead to create content to indicate what our perspective is and what people's perspective should be. So we are not partisan, but we also, yeah, every content is a bit of uh, some sort of narrative because our focus is to project the African tech culture 
we need to be partisan about that. So we are intentional about looking for guys like us who are doing things that are very cool. And once we have those meetings, we make those agreements, we start writing about it. And that's how we did it. So mostly people invite us to have conversations and we do a lot of meetings, meeting with other people, interviewing them, writing stories. But because it's a lot thing, I mm -hmm. do that myself. Okay. Yeah, so my day is um, ensuring that other people have opportunities to do great things. So I create up, I, I, I do introductions, I know people so they can know people. I go for meetings. Like networking, basically. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now that you mentioned your team, I think this is a good time to ask you. Um, how do you get new team members or how would somebody fresh out of school be a good candidate for your company? Mm. So the first thing is um, don't, don't be a fresh graduate like fresh. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so I know I know we employed someone that, that was still in school where we employed him. And that was because I saw him having a tech blog. Like he has a personal blog where he notes his opinion about the tech space. Mm. I read it and most of his write-ups were crude. Okay. So I told my team members he's a very good person. And did they allow him to keep his blog but let him also write for us, right? And we brought him in and over two years he became like a very fantastic writer. Blossom. So, if you're doing something already, okay. you don't you don't really have to join the job market free as it were. You already have something to point out to. The other thing is reach out to people. So um, LinkedIn is a very good place. Uh, don't reach out to people to say, ah, please, I'm looking for jobs. Or it's best to showcase what you do. Okay. So I'm a beautiful writer, I'm a content creator, I do this, I do that. Put the content out there and a lot of people would have. Uh, you will be surprised that most of the big content creators we know in the space are still students. Mm. So if such people want to work with people, it becomes easier, easier for them to. So it's not just about doing tech talk trend videos. Think about the space and see what things you could do. But the biggest thing you need to consider is you must take every opportunity to serve. Right? So if it is for you to do internships, those things, some of them are paid, some are mm -hmm. free, but because you're working in the real space, you understand how it works. You meet with people, and these people could refer you for bigger things in the future. So always take the opportunity. Take Castle Strikes very seriously. Seriously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Castle Strikes is an opportunity for you to do something big every time. So the longer the strike moves, the more experience you become. Yeah, I really like that. So get your hands dirty, basically. And okay, this question is like, for those people that don't know how to get their hands dirty, mm -hmm. for those people that don't know how to start, you know, now you mentioned it's good to start to do something. How do they find that niche? How do they find something that they can do? The tech space is very big. Oftentimes when people talk about the tech space, the thing you think about is software. Uh -huh. yeah, but that's, that's just one. Maybe maybe the most the, the well paid part of it I don't know but that's like one niche. Okay. There are several others you can think about. Content creation is one part which is a space I play. Okay. But there are people who do all other things at the back end. So in TechPlex we have over fourteen team members, but not everyone right. There are sure. people who are in HR, there are people who are legal, there are people who because tech needs the backend support system. Yeah. So whatever it is that you study in school, there is something you can do. Do in the tech space. That, that's what two is. Just first identify what is your biggest interest. So if you're very finicky, you're very detailed, data science could be something you could do, or even the software development because you could. You could do a lot of process and not be bored. Mm -hmm. like, but if you're very conversational and very interested social person, you could look at content creation because that is one thing you could do flawlessly mm -hmm. and you not be bored. But the point is, once you've identified your passion, look at other people who are already doing something similar and just follow your footsteps. That step. full step. It's as simple as that. And people's footsteps are very easy to track today. Just check their footprint on Twitter, LinkedIn, what is it that they've done. Where are the places where they've done oh, wow. the and replicate? Simple, just rings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. So, on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate your career journey? Uh, so, I don't know. How... One being the lowest, ten being 
something from this and I'll see you on my next one. Bye!